Okay, here is another wonderful mathematical card effect by Jason Ladani. Now for this, you need the spectator to choose four, five, six, seven, or eight random cards. It is a free choice. Now Jason here chooses five or assumes the spectator says five, which is fine. So at this point, you mix the cards as much as you want. When you're done mixing, show the spectator the bottom card. That's their card to remember, okay? So the bottom card, I think, was the Jack of Spades. Now he's going to simply spell magician by moving one card to the bottom for each letter in the word magician. And then after that, he's going to perform the down, under, down, under, down, under, down, last card, is the spectator's card. It is guaranteed to work no matter how many cards the spectator chooses between four and eight. Absolutely amazing. And Jason openly admits he has no idea how this works. So that's what we're going to quickly look at today. So a little bit of vocabulary. The lone survivor refers to that last card that survives this down, under, down, under. So we're going to view the cards set on the table as down as eliminated. Those are gone. And then the final card in your hand is the lone survivor. So for a packet of four cards, how would that work? Well, I'm going to use pennies here to cover up the cards. So this is the top card, second, third, all the way down to the bottom card of each of these different size packets. So the first card is always set down to the table. In other words, it's eliminated. So what I thought I would do is just put a penny over it to, no to notate that it's gone. Okay. So we still have in our hand cards two, three, and four. But card two gets moved to the bottom, of course. And then that leaves card three to go down or be eliminated, okay? Now, an important idea here is when these cards are moved to the bottom one at a time, they retain their order. So like, for example, if you were to just move three cards under one at a time, which we don't do here, but if you were to do that, the one would come here, the two would go below the one, the three would go below the two. So they maintain their relative order. So that's kind of helpful to be aware of, okay? So after the third card is eliminated, the next card, remember we skipped this one, the next card to be eliminated will be the two, okay? So that will go out third. So what that will do is leave card number four as the lone survivor. Okay, so let's look at what happens for a packet of five cards, which is how many Jason had. First card gets eliminated, it's gone. The third card, in fact, an easy way to kind of get through this quickly is just imagine all of the odd position cards get eliminated first, okay? And then you reassess where you are. Since we eliminated this card, card number two, goes under, it survives, and then the card after that is card number four, and it's eliminated, it's gone. Okay, so for six cards, cards one, three, five, are eliminated in the first go through of that packet. We quote, skip this one, or six survives. So two gets eliminated, okay. And we always skip the one after the one eliminated. So the four survives. The one after that is the six. And it gets set down and it is eliminated. Uh, finally, here, well, not finally, but getting close here. One, so for a packet of seven cards, it's one, three, five, seven. And then just look at cards two, four, six as their own packet, right? And since this last one was eliminated, two survives. And then the card after that is now four because the other ones are gone. The one after four, which has been eliminated, is six, so it survives. But the one after the card that survives is two, so it gets eliminated. And then finally, for a packet of eight cards, it's one, three, five, seven, all gone. So eight survives, a two gets eliminated, four survives, six gets eliminated eight survives, and then four gets eliminated. So the very ones that I've circled here are the lone survivors, four, two, four, six, eight. 
Okay, so that's the first half of understanding what's going on here. So this simply tells us which cards will survive the down under. Now, why did he spell magician? Why did that guarantee that the bottom card would be the one that survives? Okay, so that's where that magical spelling out of magician takes care of that problem for us. And by the way, at the bottom of the sheet here, I have a general formula for finding the lone survivor for the down under deal. Okay, so if you wanna read that, if you have some mathematics under your belt, this actually will give you the algorithm for figuring out what position the lone survivor will be in. Okay, so let's go on to the final explanation. Okay, so it's the same diagram essentially. I have circled in green the lone survivors, right, from the previous sheet. And then I've simply put a red box around the bottom cards because that's the card you actually show the spectator. Okay, so why would this moving the top card to the bottom eight times to spell magician guarantee that the bottom card is now going to be in the lone survivor position and be the one that remains at the very end? Let's go ahead and look at a packet of five cards, which is what Jason did. The other ones are similar, actually. Okay, so he had five cards. He showed the bottom card, and then he, quote, spelled out magician that has eight letters in its name. So if you move the top card to the bottom eight times, where is that going to land you? Well, maybe before we answer that, how far away is the current bottom card from the lone survivor position. How many like steps away is it? Well, it's one, two, three. Okay, so three positions away from the lone survivor position. Okay, so what is going to happen if we actually move the top card to the bottom eight times? Well, you're going to go through all of the cards once, one, two, three, four, five, and so you'll get that same ordering back again, as I mentioned, and just a few minutes ago. So once we move through five of them, it's like you haven't done anything. But now you're going to move an additional three cards, right? Five plus three is the eight. So now we're going to move this one, this one, and this one to the bottom. So it's like we have one, two, three. And so that would move to the top the fourth card and the original bottom card. What does that mean? That means the original bottom card is now one, two, second from the top after spelling magician, which is where we need it to be to be the lone survivor. And that kind of thing happens with all of these. This one here is kind of curious because if you move the top card to the bottom eight times, you just go through the whole packet twice, restoring the cards to their original order but the fact is the bottom card already, as we saw on the previous page, is the lone survivor. Same thing here for eight. Okay, so that's the secret. Moving the top card to the bottom eight times in all of the cases for four to eight cards will position the original bottom card in the lone survivor position. So it is guaranteed to be the one at the end of the down under deal. Okay, so that's the secret behind it. I do want to point out that I have a video that's called Great Job Einstein. This phrase has 16 letters in it. And so the video there, instead of allowing four to eight cards, I allow between eight and 16 cards. And then we spell this phrase by moving each card to the bottom. And then the original bottom card will now be in the lone survivor position for the down under deal. So this video here, I'll link in the description below, but it just ramps up the number of cards that can be used for this very surprising, seemingly impossible effect, given that the spectator is free to choose from a range of card values, yet in each case, performing the exact same procedure finishes with their card as the lone survivor. So thank you for watching and I encourage you to take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.